I had a revelation given to me that was later on confirmed in southern Greece when I visited family members. And then I discovered from them that they had been ancient Essenes, Gnostics, and had never converted to St. Paul's religion. And I couldn't quite reconcile it until I heard you speak and start teaching. And so um, I find it very ironic that I was drawn to Greece at 27 years old in 1983 and um, was given this revelation weeks before I actually discovered the significance of it um, when I was in southern Greece, finding out that my family bloodlines were Macedonian on my father's side and Spartan on my mother's side, and um, that the Macedonian side had traced its links back to pre-Christianity as um, very deeply connected with the deeper spiritual... Well, <clears throat> well, then your ancestors were called the Therapeutae and were the teachers of Philip and Alexander of Macedon. And, and your ancestors, uh, from your ancestors comes the great teachers of Aristotle and others. You are a Therapeutae. I, I believe that's so. And I've been just been resonating in my body and my spirit my entire life that I had yeah. to find... And that's why when I was being lied to in seminaries or by, by all the theological works I studied, whether it was even Luther or Calvin or anything else, I knew that there were major errors in there. Because I always knew from the day that I was born that the resonance of connecting with people and seeing the important status of women having to be raised were the most important things. And then when I read Jesus' words themselves in the Gospels and other sources like the Essene Gospel of Peace, the four books that uh, Edmund Bordeaux de translated back in the early 1920s, um, I found that the real Jesus really did teach these higher teachings that the writings of Paul always contradicted. And that's, I always have been, felt like I was going crazy when I would read Jesus' teachings and I feel the deep spiritual resonance with that. And I'd read Paul's contradictory teachings wondering how they became scripture. <laughs> and now you confirm that for me. I just can't begin to thank you so much for, helping me find these last answers that I've been looking for for the past 35, 40 years. And I, well, I, I, that's all right. But you know, you know the exciting thing is, and, and we'll, we'll keep going because I know time is, unfortunately, it's always hard with these, these calls. But, you know, the exciting thing is, is, is when there is more than one. Yes, it's great if there's one and we pray for one, but the real excitement is there's more than one. When, when there is someone in a community, in a local community, that can represent the living embodiment of that of that knowledge and that wisdom. I mean, that to me is the exciting thing because that's what we look for, we cry for. Who is it we turn to? You know, who who is it will help us? For us, it's hard because we end up having to be the ones that save ourselves. But for our families, our communities, boy, what an amazing world we're seeing unfold. I know there's problems to come. I know there's sadness and disaster and tragedy and fear and all that. That's part of life and climate and change and all of that. But to have that spark of light back in the community mm-hmm. and all of you, all of you and you in particular are that light and that's the exciting part. That's the miracle. I, I really I, I agree and I thank you so much and I just want to confirm that uh, communities do exist. When I just finally dawned on me when I was in my family village in southern Greece in 1983, but they actually lived as a community, that they, yep. nobody owned anything. They had, they had their own homes, and they, they had a huge valley of vineyards that they worked, and it was a very unique experience. I thought maybe that was the way it was throughout Greece, but I found out it wasn't. It was just those that followed the standards of the Essenes, the Therapeutae, as you say, and the Gnostics. It was well, this is the thing. This also is the thing with Eucadia. Look, the reason I haven't rushed forward and, and said, you know, here's the documents for the communities and build, 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 there are, well, there are already communities, multiple communities in places like the States. I mean, if you take the, the current community, well, that is clearly community, but then you've got all sorts of other groups that are building and working. I mean, you've got the, you've got the governors and the, and the republics. You've got the assemblies. You've got all these groups that have, you know, amazing people and amazing thought and design already in place. So I'm really hoping that, 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 that rather than people thinking we've got to start again, which is always difficult, we recognise what's already in front of us. So again, thanks for your comments and, and, and all of you you're saying. Thanks again. Thank you, Frank, very much. All right, thank you. Yes, uh, Frank, we have a few more questions on the chat uh, group, and I didn't know what your time schedule was looking like, so I just thought we would... Yeah, let's... 
I've got about another 15 minutes, so I'll try and keep the I'll try and keep the commentary short to get through. Okay. So yeah, far away. All right. Um, could you explain how the bankers are robbing the treasury of heaven? We, you mentioned it a couple of times, and yeah, I covered it a bit earlier, but I'll, I'll do I'll do it again. Um, what I said was that the there is a theology that underpins the sacrament of penance and the indulgence, and this and the theology is that, uh, and this is essential to Christian theology. It's a fundamental tenet that there is a thing called the treasury of heaven or the treasury of one heaven. That in that treasury there is an unlimited uh, resource of credit, and that credit exists through the blood of the uh, saints and the apostles that sacrificed, hence why we recognize blood as a currency. That's where the blood seal comes in. Uh, And that when someone commits a sin on earth, through the grace of the martyrs who fill the treasury because of their blood, there is a set-off, there is a reconciliation, so that in the spiritual world, our sins are forgiven through divine grace. But it leaves the temporal world to have that transaction balanced. Now, when a bank, a private money temple, issues spiritual currency under that model, and it doesn't reconcile or behave according to the honour, then they are as cheating. They are robbing or frauding the treasury of heaven by not reconciling correctly in accordance to the theology. That's what I meant by robbing heaven or embezzling heaven. Okay? All right. Uh, all right. Thank you for explaining. Uh, so we did cover uh, Klaus's question. Uh, you covered that one earlier. Um, yep. Okay. Very good. Um, there's a question here regarding um, uh, Japan. Yep. And I didn't know if uh, you might uh, be able to expand a little bit on that um, regarding the reactors in Japan and why if they've, they've not sealed them um, and about well, the radiation. I, yeah, I know people are concerned about the reactors in Japan and they're concerned about the the fallout. But but I want to say that in the blessed, in the best laid plans. Firstly, I don't believe the reactors at all were that there's a conspiracy. Uh, what I would what I would um, suggest to you, and I know that people have different opinions on this, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to I don't want to poo poo people's ideas. If you've got an idea, that's fine. But I would simply say the only conspiracy regarding the reactors in Japan is an example of corporate malfeasance and shoddy work and general lackadaisical approach to uh, risk management and that caused the, the problems. The the thing that the powers that be keep underestimating over and over again is the power of the earth and indeed the power of life to bypass their best laid plans. And I'll give an example, a classic example of that and it may sound funny to use this example versus the reactors but the human body uses viruses in order to transmit knowledge and function. So when we, through immune programs, have been supposedly weakened so that pandemics could sweep through, like the attempted bird flu and the attempted swine flu, both deliberate attempts to create manufactured pandemics. Indeed, AIDS is another. What instead has happened is that the body, having been boosted, through all these viruses that they inoculate us with, they actually made us stronger to withstand their attacks. So in the case of the reactors, the Earth seems to be playing an active role in reducing the risk despite all of that's happening. So I wouldn't be fearful of the kind of uh, things you're seeing just as I wouldn't be fearful of the comet Elenin. I think the issue that we've got to keep focusing on is learning, 
growing, communicating and demonstrating to others how to live without fear, with honour, with confidence. So I know that's a long-winded answer, but I hope you I hope that's a, a, a fair enough answer. That's my my response to Japan. All right, thank you, Frank. Um, there's a question uh, regarding the uh, jubilee on uh, when you were talking, covering some issues uh, on the financial side and uh, scriptural and uh, true scripture side. Uh, will the grand jubilee be reinstated or reinstituted? Well, yes, the Grand Jubilee absolutely is being reinstated, and that's the day of redemption. It's a day of reconciliation. It's a jubilee. I mean, what we're saying in terms of judgment is they're being judged incompetent, but all the debt in the world is zeroed out. This, you know, when their system is zeroed out, all the debt in the world is zeroed out. The whole currency system of UK is based on credits. You can't get any more clearer than that. That is clearly a jubilee now. With, so that is an honouring to scripture. That's an honouring to scripture in the in the highest sense. Now, there's one qualification I want to make. The system of jubilee in their system was essential, on top of what I've just described, because as a system of debt, there was a risk that the system would blow out through malfeasance, and so the jubilee was a safety mechanism which the present infected parasite mind of, of fraudism didn't think was important. And by removing the jubilee, they've allowed the system to reach a terminal point as it is. Okay? Yeah, they've actually allowed it to get so huge it's imploded and imploding on, it, on itself. What do you say? Yes. Absolutely. All right, we have a question. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Liberty Dollar um, folks. Um, are you, were you familiar about what was going on with, with them? Vaguely. I, I'm, I, I have to say, to be honest, I'm not familiar with how they have conducted the court cases and um, how they have done the charges. So, unfortunately, no, I, I, I don't really have the knowledge on how it's come about. Gee, I'd love them to, to know about what we're doing, but, you know, people on their own journey. But, no, I'm not familiar with how they're approaching it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting situation. Um, all right, now is uh, here's a question from the chat. Is it possible that um, these people have the ability to fake a believable alien attack? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But he, he, here's a problem that that people um, that people uh, aren't fully aware. Nuclear nuclear weapons, uh, which people fear uh, and should fear, have been proven only to to function to their full potential in stationary explosions and that any moving explosion of a nuclear device will only produce a dirty bomb of limited potential. So I would suggest to you that any attempt to create the sort of alien invasion type scenario um, would be uh, limited in the kinds of weapons they'd use. And you know, I think it would be it would be a pretty hard one. I think you know you hear all this stuff about HARP and HARP playing a contributing role in terms of these different things. Just just to be clear on on the extent of their their weaponry, the the energy involved in the Japanese earthquake is equivalent to all the energy output of all the electric generating stations in the world, all of them over a factor of probably about 20 to 30,000 years. So if you took all the energy capacity of around the world, 
So it doesn't matter what's hidden. It does not matter what's hidden. Just take all the publicly known. You're talking about 10 to 20,000 years of constant production.